Welcome back once again to another episode of Cedar Flags. This episode was supposed to be doing some scenery work, but in the last episode, you guys actually came out with a ton of comments, which was awesome. That was the episode, of course, when we started laying out this new coaster. You guys had so many awesome comments, so many great names, by the way. Um, we're still not quite settled on a name. I have something in mind, but I don't think I'm going to release that in this episode. We're going to wait till the next episode. Um, but yeah, this episode, obviously what we're doing right now is tweaking that first drop. I had a few people point out that the first drop was probably the weakest part of this track layout, and I kind of knew that. I didn't necessarily want to have to go through and redo the first drop here, but in the end, I felt like uh, it was probably for the best. So I actually like what we end up with at the end of this. This was actually a trial run. I was gonna kind of play around with it and if it didn't work, I was just gonna say screw it and then carry on with what I was planning on doing, which was the station and some of that scenery work. But no, um, the next episode we'll be doing the scenery work. This episode we're doing this, this track tweak and then the final part of the time lapse, we're going to be doing something that was very highly, um, I guess, wanted in the comments from last episode and that was to custom support the first hill and oh boy that was fun uh we'll talk a bit about that when we get to it but as far as what we're doing with the remodeling of this first drop you can see we actually cut the ride back quite a bit into the second and third drop sections and we're kind of angling that more toward um this little area where the hill is going to be now the new first drop is actually going to be a large sweeping turning drop, which is, I think, more true to an arrow style. I'm pretty sure a few of the arrow hyper coasters had this style of drop. Now, I actually posted a, a picture of this on the Planet Coaster subreddit, and it had the new supports, which you'll see me get to in a little bit here. But uh, the biggest criticism, I think, that I got from that one picture was that the drop didn't look like it was steep enough. So. It is kind of possible that the drop is probably not quite steep enough, but I like the turn a lot better than uh, what we had before. It also ends up becoming kind of cool because this first turn now goes under that returning part of the track where we had that artificial hill before. Now it looks like that hill's actually there for a purpose. So that is pretty cool, like a really cool byproduct of just this whole remodeling here. Now, I I think uh, the drop is probably not as steep. I want to touch on that once again here, but uh, the problem is we have a lot of things in the way. So to make a true, I think like what 60 degree drop is what I think people were recommending. Um, to get that, we would have had to basically drop right on the existing track of this ride and also the train track. So it was kind of in the way. So I think in the end, we actually get a little uh, you know, less steep hill than is recommended for an aero coaster. But in the end here, it looks so much better. It's a way better ride and it's kind of cool now. But uh, the other suggestion that some of you guys had for the track design was that the banking on some of the turns was not enough, which I'm usually pretty good with in terms of like designing the coaster and the banking in it. But I, I found a couple turns here and there the last one that kind of goes into that cave, I think you guys were right on. There was definitely not enough banking in that. But for the most part, most of the banking was pretty good. I think I actually ended up tweaking all of them just a smidge, though, adding a little bit more. And it really ended up coming out pretty nice. I think I don't think it really added to anything. And that was a big thing when I was redoing this track was I didn't want to, like, make the ratings any worse than they are. It was going to be interesting to see if they got any better. And I think they got slightly better, but... I don't know, it wasn't really like a drastic drop or change of any sort. And I know the, the ratings actually don't really matter for this game, but I, I, it was like a challenge. I didn't want to like drop the ratings too much. Uh, you're seeing us reroute the train track again. Um, that train track is ever changing, but this really makes a lot more sense in my mind here. The train now kind of runs parallel to itself a little bit and then returns to the other land. And we cut out a lot of that peninsula that we had on the lake. And I think that ends up looking a lot more natural. So you guys might have to let me know. It is kind of funny because instead of going all the way around, we could have just connected the track up. 
like on this side of the shore. I guess I'll show you guys that in the live portion, but um, I, I like having it kind of meander back through the scenery area and it's going to be kind of nice. But anyway, moving on here, we're going over to the fun part of the build and that is the custom supports. Now, in the last update, or uh, I think it was just the update, I don't think it was in the DLC, but we got a whole new menu, essentially, of just different track supports and stuff, so this is kind of interesting. Um, this, there's gonna be a few things here and there. You're gonna see a few iterations of this track design, or the support design here, but in the end, it looks pretty awesome. It's a little bit different than like a true arrow, but it's still, very much inspired by an arrow hyper hill so um we're going with like a scaffolding kind of feel to it now these cross beams that you just saw me put up at the top these were kind of the only ones that i found so they ended up being a little bit big and they were a little bit bigger than the original uh support pieces that i put down there so we're using these slightly bigger support beams that are i think just steel beams and it ends up looking pretty good it's a little thicker than the traditional hyper uh supports so if you're gonna compare it picture to picture i guess there's a little bit of a critique there but uh i think it ends up looking better this way because that cross beam at the top ends up fitting very nicely into these beams and it just adds a lot more for uh just the track to connect back up to here so yeah, this was kind of weird. I was, this is obviously the first time, well, maybe it's not obvious, but this is my first time custom supporting a ride at all. So there was a lot of learning that had to be done here. There was a lot of just, I guess, learning curve going on. And it just, it comes out pretty nice. I got a method down. I actually speed up this time lapse in a second here to just bypass some of the tediousness of putting these down. But uh, yeah, it it's, kind of a pain I'm not gonna lie and I tried to conserve on piece count as much as possible here and there so like the beams at the top I'm sure we could have made some custom smaller beams to be more true to like an arrow coaster but I like that it's basically just three pieces up there and we're not wasting a ton of pieces on this because it is I don't just like for authenticity's sake uh, I don't think it's worth trying to like jam all these pieces together so we're, we're still trying to design this park in like a manner that we can still basically play it. I mean, it is starting to get a little bit framey, but it's not that bad. And I know some, some of like the bigger designers on YouTube will have these parks where there's like two FPS after like the first major coaster goes in and it's just, ugh. yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have that. So yes, we're, we're trying to kind of conserve parts here. Some compromises are made here and there, and I think in the end it ends up being good enough, and I think you guys are going to like it. So, yes, we're actually doing this weird scaffolding where we have, I forget, I think it's on the the big one, I think, uh, where it's got these basically support scaffoldings up, and then there's spaces in between them that are kind of just tied together by horizontal scaffolding pieces. So that is one way to save on some prop count here, but... I think I like this a lot, and uh, you saw before I was going to go down and do every single like chunk of this as one big scaffolding. I think this breaks it up a little bit, and it's it's actually kind of nice. So I like these little 8 meter sections in between, and I think it's 8, it might be 8 feet? No, I think it's still 8 meter in the menu. Even if you change your game over to feet, I think the pieces are still labeled as meter, but yeah, this ends up looking pretty good and you're gonna see the method that I finally get down to just duplicate these and transfer them over and it's basically just copy paste it delete the cross beams uh, raise them up duplicate another section once or twice and repeat so yeah it's a uh, it's a little bit of a challenge but once I got the system down it wasn't that bad it was just very very tedious work but a lot of you guys really wanted to see this, so I really, honestly, I wasn't planning on doing a custom support job on this. Uh, but there, there was somebody who said it and it had a ton of thumbs up in the comments section. Yes, I still do read all the comments, usually. Uh, at least on my newest released videos, I will try to go through them once before I record the next uh, voiceover work. And uh, yeah, it just, uh, it was something you guys really wanted to see. 
and I had to deliver. I mean, it was actually kind of interesting to learn. I mean, I, I did a little bit of studying of Google Images to just see what Aero Coasters had done in the past. Tried to mimic it a little bit. Like I said, there were compromises here and there, but it just, it was kind of interesting. And I just, I can't even fathom like how actual companies put these roller coasters together. I mean, let alone designing the engineering behind all of this and just like getting all of the, the pieces ordered. Like all of these steel beams have to be structured together and they have to be planned out in the exact like perfect like lengths and stuff. And then you have to like put all the footers down at the exact same or the exact perfect height for the design. It's just crazy when you think about these construction of these coasters, it's, it's ridiculous. And luckily we have a ton of flexibility in this game. Whereas we don't need to like plan this stuff out exactly. We, we can go in and lay down all the construction and then do like the landscaping around it later. But yeah, it's just crazy when you think about it. And it's, it's actually really cool to see a coaster like being built to you get pictures here and there and you get to see things like getting pieced together. It's just such an awesome thing. And I think, It'd be really cool to see in a video game, like, if you could design, like, say we designed this entire coaster and then uh, we hit, like, the play button and then there was, like, a faux construction team that had to come in and actually fabricate it and it took in-game time. That would be really interesting. Like, you'd have to actually manage around that. It'd be kind of cool. A pro It would probably be a ton of work, not, not gonna lie, like, to design that game. Uh, it's probably not worth it, which is probably why we've never seen it before, but that would be so it'd be just really interesting But anyway, we're just kind of finishing up the uh, Last section of the lift hill here, and this was weird I, I didn't really know like where to end the custom support So I originally planned on ending it I think right about here and then I stepped back and I was like, you know what? this just doesn't look great going back into like the organic supports that are put in via the game so yeah you're seeing me bounce back and I'm just like we have to do more and I didn't want to go super overboard with it but it just had to look okay so uh, yeah we end up actually doing a little bit more support work after we do a little bit of terrain work here and it's gonna be on the a majority of that first drop so we're just I was trying to tweak the terrain here and there to get the vanilla supports to look good to just you know take the easy way out almost and in the end it just didn't look great so we we bit the bullet we went ahead and we flattened all that terrain out and we end up doing what we needed to do and that is custom support this entire drop and it was weird because the drop is on a turn so it wasn't exactly the easiest thing to do it wasn't like super terrible but I really would not want to have to custom support an entire roller coaster. That'd be, oh, that'd be something else. Especially with like a, a scaffolding type style like we have here, it would just be such a nightmare. But uh, yeah, we're just copying the scaffolding we have over. We're gonna actually separate it from the building. I don't know if you guys know how to do that, but there's a button that comes up if you have a selection. You can split it from the current building and it makes it its own building piece or just its own building entity. So we were just doing that and then making the turn and then these eight meter cross beams we end up just kind of having them touch the other supports and it actually ends up being uh, fairly nice. It wasn't that bad. Sometimes when you're working on a curve like that you'll have one of the supports go all the way through and like clip through the other side and then the other support won't hit it exactly right. This time we got pretty lucky with that. We didn't really need to adjust any of that. So. It was fairly simple, as simple as a custom support job can be, but yeah, it ends up looking pretty good, and I think that's going to be about it for this time lapse here, so let's go ahead and hop over to see what we just did. All right, guys, we are back live looking at our new arrow inspired coaster and the new arrow inspired support structure. So yes, it adds quite a bit and it looks pretty darn good if I could say so myself. Now I think I went over the criticisms as much as I could in the time lapse and that was basically that these beams are a little too thick to call like authentic um, arrow, but I think it's 
at least inspired enough to match the inspired coaster that we have here. So, yes, the other criticism is that the first hill that you just saw isn't quite as steep as it probably could be or maybe should be for an aero inspired ride. But I talked a little bit about how we were pretty much just up against a a lot of things here actually. We're up against the boundary of the park. We're up against running in like if we actually wanted to maybe make it as steep as it possibly could be uh, or like as as steep as an arrow should be it would probably end up being right here on this other section of the track or at least colliding with the train track here so yes this little corner of the park has a ton going on now and it's kind of cool actually so yeah i love this first sweeping drop now again i'm not going to be doing a pov in this video if you guys stop by a live stream which i'm trying to start doing on sundays at probably around 1 or 2 p.m eastern time you might be able to sneak a pov ride in over there but yeah uh this first sweeping drop now is pretty cool it actually dips below uh water level over here which is interesting and i'm thinking over here we're gonna want to do some sort of like retaining wall out of like bricks and stuff like that it could be kind of cool but then it goes back up and it goes under this little bunny hill that we have here so before this hill was just here to kind of eke out a couple more points of excitement on the rating system but now it looks like it's actually like part of the design now it looks like it's actually going over the first drop which is awesome i i love how that turned out and like i said i i deleted a lot of that first part you know it came like from like right here and then went this way and then it was kind of an awkward turn so this this whole layout now flows a little bit better so this is more straight now and it just flows a little bit better as a ride. So honestly, the extra work that I wasn't really planning on doing in this episode turns out to be pretty necessary and actually pretty good. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. And if we can check the ratings real fast, I'm not entirely sure what they were last time, but they are pretty much the same, if not a little bit better. One funny thing I actually saw after I rerouted this entire railroad track here was that I like stepped back here and I was like, wait a minute, uh, we could have just taken this from right here and put it right up to here. And my logic behind not doing that is to give the railroad a little bit more of a scenic route because it is supposed to be a cool ride for the park. And also that I really want to develop this lakefront property here with some shops and cool rides and stuff like that. So I didn't necessarily want to put a railroad right in the middle of it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We didn't do a whole lot in this episode, but there was just like a lot of minutia going on and a lot of tedious work with these supports. They look so good though. And I'm actually really happy I took the leap to do them. So yeah, I wouldn't expect that on like every coaster, but yeah, some projects here and there are pro probably gonna get some custom support. Next episode, we're gonna be working on the station building, probably exclusively and then we're going to be expanding out into the track scenery before we get that awesome POV ride for our new coaster. So guys, I guess that's about it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up. If I did a horrible job, let me know with a thumbs down. And I will see you next time back here in Cedar Flags.